Ling, Selma's adopted daughter, made her Simpsons debut way back in season 16, almost 19 years ago. And even though I was just 10 at the time, I do remember being very happy that sad Selma Bouvier finally got her happily ever after. But flash forward to now, and Ling has pretty much vanished. And whenever we see Selma, Ling is nowhere to be found. So what happened? Did Selma give her back up for adoption, or have the writers simply forgotten that she exists? It's something that's been bothering me and apparently you guys for a very long time now. So let's explore this mystery. But I'll tell you what's not a mystery, and that is the fact that my brand new book, Collecting the Simpsons, is finally out in my homeland of the UK. So grab your copy now by using the links down in my description below. And if you have bought it already, then thank you so much. So now let's uncover this mystery by first looking at Selma's longing for motherhood. Although Selma started out in the show as just one half of a bitchy sister-in-law stereotype, she didn't stay in that box for very long. We soon learn that deep down she had always wanted just one thing, a family, thus differentiating her from her twin, Patty. Patty, I want a baby. And it was in season four, Selma's choice, that she realized her time was slowly running out. And do it now, now, now. Therefore, Selma dives into Springfield's dating pool, which turned out to be very, very shallow. No, not even Mole Man could entice Selma. Ugh, get out of my car. So after some really bad dates, Lisa brings up artificial insemination. But before she goes ahead, Selma takes her niece and nephew to Duff Gardens, and at first she thinks kids are a walk in the park, until Bar gets stuck on a roller coaster and Lisa becomes the Lizard Queen. The episode ends with her walls coming down fully as she shares one of her most vulnerable moments in the show with the guy we'd least expect her to. I just couldn't cut it today. This gives her pause to realize that she's not ready for children. Not yet anyway. But what she is ready for, however, is to be a mother to an iguana called Jub Jub. Aww. It would be three seasons later in season seven where her pursuit of a family would pick up again in A Fish Called Selma. This time with a father in mind, Troy McClure, who unfortunately had his own less wholesome motivations. She becomes involved with the washed up actor when he takes her out to dinner only to get his driving license validated. But then he realizes that she's the key to revive his dead career. Here you go, boys. A little something for page one. And although she is head over heels for him, his interests lie in the fishy variety. Maybe those rumors about his fish fetish weren't true after all. And when Selma finds out that he's only using her for his public image, she's hella mad until he persuades her to stay. Sure, you'll be a sham wife, but you'll be the envy of every other sham wife in town. He then floats the idea of them having a child, albeit to land him a big movie role, but even still, Selma is very excited at the prospect of being a mother. At first, anyway. Because when Troy struggles to do the deed, she realizes that it's wrong to bring a child into a loveless marriage. It's supposed to be an expression of the feelings we're supposed to have for each other. Selma's raw emotion in this scene breaks my heart every single time. Out of everyone in the show, I always felt that Selma was one of the characters who felt so real. Oh God, I'm such a fool. I loved the idea that she had a real desire to start a family where she can really invest her love, but she's not willing to compromise her morals. To put it shortly, she would rather be lonely than to live a lie. Come on, Jub Jub. Let's go home and I'll microwave you some nice roaches. But thankfully, Selma's dream of motherhood finally came true in season 16's Goo Goo Guy Pan. Again, she finds her time is running out while experiencing menopause, but this time she decides that she doesn't need a man and so turns to adoption. However, after a mishap when trying to adopt a member of the Cletus clan, Lisa offers another suggestion. China has thousands of baby girls who need adoption. There's just one problem though, unmarried women can't adopt in China. So Homer pretends to be her husband, fools the adoption agency, and Selma is given her little baby Ling. Selma, she's beautiful. <laughs> but then when Madame Wu finds out about the trickery, she takes the baby away. So to get her back, Homer dresses up as a Buddha, sneaks into the adoption center, and retrieves Ling. 
And just when Selma and Ling are about to be reunited, Madame Wu comes back again to take her back. But this time, Selma gives an impassioned speech about motherhood, and Madame Wu relents and lets her keep the baby. You may keep your baby. But you, drop the panda! But he loves me! Ow! I feel that Selma's arc since season four had been leading up to this very moment. She had tried to go down the traditional route of marrying a man to have a baby, but one tried to kill her and one was far too interested in sleeping with the fishes. I thought you said Troy McClure was dead. No, what I said was he sleeps with the fishes. So I loved that Selma found happiness in herself and realized she could be a mother without getting into a miserable and horrible marriage. So now that Selma has a daughter, does she finally get her happy ending that she's always deserved? Well, she might have done, but we don't really see any of it. No, Baby Ling doesn't appear until a whole season later, and then once again, a season after that where she's being held by Patty at an outdoor cinema. And it is very weird because they don't acknowledge her presence at all. She's just kinda… there. She does have a slightly bigger role a few episodes later in Romeo Old and Juliet, where Grandpa is looking after his grandkids and Selma is invited to look after Grandpa. And perhaps she looks after him a bit too much because they get a whole lot closer to the point where they end up getting married. It's only later that they realize that their age gap is far too large and eventually break up. But again, Baby Ling barely plays a role in this episode. So by this point, it's been two whole years since Ling was first introduced and Selma hasn't even spoken to her. Even Grandpa has more time with Ling than Selma does. And what's worse, we wouldn't see Ling again until season 20's Pranks and Greens. As part of the Midday Mummies Club, Selma and the other mums are shocked that Marge would serve her baby cookies or have a number seven sippy cup. And it's worth noting that this is the first time where we've seen Selma be an actual mother. It wasn't much, simply being a high up on her horse mother, but at least it was a bit nicer to see her embrace motherhood a bit more. Don't get used to it though, as Ling would develop into being a simple prop in Selma's arms, which we see as she appears sporadically over the following seasons. She has zero bearing on any story. You could basically cut her out of any scene and literally nothing would be lost. But her next big appearance would be in season 24's The Changing of the Guardian. In the episode, we find out that Patty and Selma have been tiger mothering Ling, which basically means forcing her to play the flute, paint, lasso, and do gymnastics all at the same time. But you know what, I always found it so odd that Ling had somehow aged by two years here, despite the fact that Maggie Simpson hasn't aged a day. The only reason I can think of why they aged her was because they wanted Ling to be doing all of these advanced things, and it doesn't make any sense timeline-wise, but hey, it's The Simpsons. And it's in the same season that Ling is seen again, slightly younger mind you than before, but she's still playing advanced things, this time playing the violin. When Selma first got Ling and given her previous progression, it did look like she was gonna be a loving and supportive mother. So it's very disappointing to see that she turned into a pretty standard and strict parent. More syncopated, stick the landing and no resenting us ever. Could this be Patty's influence? I think it could be, but they never really explore it. But anyway, that brings me to Ling's last appearance. Ling's last appearance would be in season 27's Puffless, and despite half of the episode being focused on Patty and Selma quitting smoking, Ling barely appears in it. Which is a strange choice seeing as this is a Selma-centric episode. It's a real shame because she could have had a larger role. They could have positioned it so Selma wanted to quit smoking because she wanted to see Ling grow up and be a woman. Or alternatively, half the plot of the episode was basically Maggie going on her own adventure, so she could have easily joined her cousin in an animal escapade. But no, she does nothing. While I was researching, Simpsons Wiki did say that she also appeared in season 34's My Life as a Vlog, but I guess she could be this girl, but I don't know. It doesn't really look like her. I might be wrong though. It's a real shame because Ling could have opened up a door to so many possible storylines. It would have been interesting seeing Selma struggle with the hardships of being a new parent, and she could have also had that niche of being one of the only single mothers apart from Nelson's, who we all know isn't really much of a mother. Like she could have turned to Marge for advice or even better Homer, which would have been a great callback to their previous conversation in season four. A dynamic that really differentiated her from Patty. 
I think a big reason why they never did anything with Baby Ling from this point is because the producers don't really know what to do with her. Being a baby, there just isn't much you can actually do. Hell, we've already got Maggie Simpson and they barely even use her for anything. Plus you've got a poo's A-babies who first appeared in season 11 and we've barely seen them either. So did they really need more baby characters? Back then, I just think they wanted one episode where Selma won by giving her something she had always desired. But I don't really think they put any thought into what happens after that. Selma and a few of the other characters are better and more dynamic by being sadder ones. Mo, Selma, Gil, it gives them more of an identity when placed next to more zany and carefree characters. Therefore, linking onto this, I think that Ling's disappearance probably has the same reason as Myers, who we haven't seen since getting engaged to Mo in season 33. Yep, just when we thought that the lonely old barkeep had finally found his perfect woman after a lifetime of sadness, she just disappeared. It's been two seasons since she said yes, and we haven't seen her again since. She hasn't even been referenced. And that's the key problem you have when you give a character their happy ending. What do you do from there? In most stories, that's when it ends. But in a TV show like The Simpsons, where the show has to go on, it means reverting characters back to their basic quirks. I.e. Mo is sad and lonely, and Selma is miserable and constantly looking for love. But what do you guys think? Should Ling return or should she stay in the background? I'd love to hear your thoughts. Also, I'd like to say a big thank you to my patrons for supporting my channel. Thank you so much and I'll smell you later.